Hi, this is Bob Wormsley from Insidium, and in this constraint tutorial, we're going to take some particles and make them behave in a cloth like way. We will then use those particles to deform a low poly plane, creating some cloth, and then we'll effectively up res this simulation by using a subdivision surface. So let's get started. Now there are two checkboxes in the X particles constraints object. Under the connections tab and the birth connections, we have polygon edges and polygon diagonal. And this enables you to simulate a cloth like simulation, which will run and calculate pretty quickly. And this is good if you just need a simple piece of cloth, you don't necessarily need the complexity of the X particles cloth object. So let's um, set this up. In this scene we have a sphere with a collider tag on and let's say that we want this plane to behave like a piece of cloth. We want it to fall and we want it to um, drape over this sphere. So let's set that up. First of all in the modifiers tab let's bring in a motion modifier and a gravity. And then in our default emitter we want to emit from the plane. So let's go to the object tab Emit a shape, we'll set to object, drag in our plane, and we want to emit from the points which will birth a particle on each vertex. Let's check one particle per source element, so we've got one particle per vertex, and in the emission tab we'll just change it from rate to shot. So if we just go forward one frame, now we've got our particles on our vertices. Uh, they're slightly raised up and that's because we have got subframe emit on and the particles have some initial speed. So let's just take that speed off, go forward a frame again and now we can't hardly see them because they're being obscured by the plane. Right, so let's go to the display tab of the emitter and change it from dots to, um, let's go with squares. So there's our particles. I'm just going to make the plane invisible for now actually, so let's just make that invisible. All right, and we're also going to display constraints. OK, so now we've got this set up, let's look at these two new settings. We'll go to the constraints object and under the connections, birth tab, we have got various options. So if we just connect at birth, like we have seen before with the default settings, and go forward a frame, we have all of these connections been created from the constraints object and that's because we have this connection limit of 8 with a radius of 40 centimeters so what it's saying is if a particle is going to look in a radius of 40 centimeters for other particles and connect to 8 at the very most so we're getting this really connected um, uh, pattern so let's just hit play and that falls down and bounces and tears off the um, sphere so let's just put the tearing to nothing and we're kind of getting something, but it's falling through. All right. So what do we do to make this behave a bit more like cloth? Well, this is where our polygon edges and polygon diagonal checkboxes come in. So let's just go forward a frame again. So what I'm going to do is a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to put my search radius down to zero. So it's not allowed to search anywhere at all. So if I go forward a frame now, there's no connections made because there aren't any particles within a search radius of zero that have to be on top of each other. So that's not working. And I'm also going to put the connection limit right down to one. So nothing's going to happen. But look what happens if I um, select a polygon edges and go forward a frame. Now it is used the polygon edges from the plane, which is the object that's been used to emit the particles, and it's created a connection. If I hit polygon diagonal and respawn them, now we have got the edge constraint and a diagonal constraint. So the last thing we need to do to get this starting to work a little bit like cloth is go to the collisions tab and we'll check the constraints collisions. So now we should have something hopefully that looks a little bit like cloth draping on this sphere. Let's have a look. All right, so it's still kind of poking through, and that's because our constraints are stretching a little bit. So to make them more accurate, let's go to um, Control-D, 
and we'll go to the X particles menu in our project menu and let's just up the subframe steps to say three. Let's have a look. Okay, and now it's holding on. They're stretching a little bit, but it's kind of holding on. All right, so that's looking pretty decent. So let's try and visualize this a little bit better at the moment. We're just looking at the constraints and the particles. So what can we do? Well, here is something, another feature that a lot of people either don't know about or have forgotten about. Let's go back to frame zero, make the plane visible. There is an X particles object that allows you to deform any piece of Cinema 4D geometry based on particles that have been emitted from it. So let's go to X particles menu and we're going to go to other objects and we're going to bring in an XP deformer. And this works like any Cinema 4D deformer. Let's drag it as a child of the plane. And in the deformer, it's saying which particles do you want to use to deform the geometry. So let's drag in our emitter. And I'm just going to make that emitter invisible so we don't see the particles. So now what should happen is the plane should be deformed along the lines of those particles. Let's have a look. And there we go. So there is our cloth. Now, the beauty of this is that it's still completely parametric. So if we want to have more subdivisions, which will give us a more accurate look, all we need to do is go to the plane. Let's put the segments up from 20 to 40 on both the X and the Y. So now the plane has got way more divisions. This means we're going to have more particles. And as a result, the constraints are going to be a bit more accurate. Now, we're losing some of them through. So let's have a look at why that might be happening. Well, we have 100% friction on the sphere, but our particles from the emitter, let's have a look at their friction values. So to do that, we go to the emitter, extended data, physical data, and we've got a bounce value of 100, so let's drop that down, and let's up the friction of those particles. Now let's see what happens. That's helping, okay. We could also go to the constraints, and we can increase the stiffness, all right. Very nice. Now, let's just press NA to hide those lines. So we're getting these really bad kind of fong shading problems because our angle isn't great enough. So there's a couple of things that we can do. Um, we can just go to the fong tag and increase that fong angle, which will smooth some of them, some of them out. But, but some of them, the angle has been broken so much, even that isn't helping us. I've done that on the sphere, not the plane. Okay, let's go back. Let's increase the fong angle. And you see it's smoothing it out, but we're still getting some uh, problems. So the, the way around that would either be to have loads more subdivisions in the plane, but then it's going to start calculating more slowly. Or what we could do is just take that plane, put it in a subdivision surface, and suddenly we've got this incredibly smooth bit of cloth. And let's drop it down. And there we go. And we've got this cloth hanging over the sphere. Now, it's a little bit stretchy and bouncy at the moment. So how do we get around that and make it maybe perhaps a little bit less elastic? We're also getting some intersections as these particles are colliding. So we'll go to the constraints. We're at stiffness 100 now, and it's still going to be a little bit too stretchy. So the only way now to make it more stiff is to increase the substeps and iterations of the solve. So we'll press Control or Command D for the Cinema 4D project settings. And in the X particles tab, let's put our subframe steps up to say six. Now this will be much stiffer because there are more calculations and more iterations going on. Much stiffer. And there we go. Okay, looking good. So the one last thing we can do, we're getting a few intersections here where these um, particles are colliding. Um, so the last thing we can do to try and stop that is, let's just make the emitter visible again. And in the display mode of the emitter, I'm going to change the editor display from squares to circles, because this is going to give me a true representation of the size of these particles. All right, so there's my particles. And... 
they're nowhere near overlapping, which means that they're going to be able, they've got room to be able to kind of intersect where the cloth is going to look like it's cutting in itself. So if we just increase the radius of those particles, let's put them up to five. So we want them, yeah, so they're, they're just about touching perfectly there. So let's see, this should hopefully give us a little bit more accuracy and less likelihood yet. Yeah, and that stopped most of that intersecting. So as you can see, for a very fast simulating basic cloth sim, we can use XP constraints using the birth connections and the poly edges poly diagonal settings to give a really nice fast simulating but nice looking cloth simulation.